Hello, dear friends. <laughs> I'm Nancy Allen Peden, and this is my friend, Pi Luna. Hello. Um, and this is what we're calling an improvisation <laughs> and a, an experiment. Uh, we both have YouTube channels, and I have a newsletter called Reflexivity, and I'm featuring Pi's art this month and i'm so excited because it turns out i so i call myself a spiritual philosopher i work in natural health and well-being and i am really highly educated in a lot of uh far out stuff like quantum science mm -hmm. and um as pi and i started to talk and she'll tell you, she'll tell you, we began to realize we were both interested in getting out of boxes. I, th I think that's a real important one you said, Pi, because so many people feel boxed in right now, mm -hmm. especially now, let alone the pandemic and Zooming and all mm -hmm. this stuff. But um, Pi will astound, her art will astound you. So we're we're basically our question or our interest or our passion is how do we make order out of chaos you know and there's times you can't there's time and i bet pi has some stories about that <laughs> so i'll just begin with that and um and pi how how would you like to start mm -hmm. um well i love this idea of getting out of boxes um so i feel like our culture wants to put us into labels, you know, and one area that showed up with me is with work. Um, so you would either be an artist and that's all you do, uh -huh. or you're a dentist and that's all you do, you know, and we get right. these categories. But what happens when you don't fit the categories or you occupy multiple categories? Um, well, uh, if I can, uh -huh. can, I, can I bust in a yeah. bit? Um, I mean, philosophically, it's a great question because I was actually in a group recently that wanted to talk about eldering because I uh -huh. happen to be 72. Um, and I said, I don't want to be put in that box. Right. You know, um, and I actually, uh, I found an article that said there's different perceptions of age. Uh-huh. So I'm really interested in how do we perceive, is this a box or not? I do believe we as convenience or, or, or the way we know anything is by categorizing it. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the boundaries, and as one teacher said, have to be semi-permeable. Yeah. And that's where we begin to learn is um, when you say, um, when, um, well, we are not one, well, no, where you and I really hit the same nail, um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, um, but we both, once you begin to understand some of these, when you see Pi's art and you'll see all the little pieces mm -hmm. and that they come together coherently and create order mm -hmm. so another metaphor for that so here's a little quantum for any of you that don't feel like oh how can i handle all that stuff <laughs> well the the actual what we're learning more and more and it's real interesting because a lot of quantum physicists later became mystics like david uh -huh. bone and what they found out, um, I have to tell a real short story. David Bohm, one of the wonderful things in his biography, he was considered the father of, by some, of quantum physics. And he worked at UC Berkeley. And he had had a really tough childhood and stuff. But he spent all day, and Pi will talk to you about numbers soon. Um, <laughs> But he spent all days with the chalkboard and making these incredible theorems and that stuff. 
but every night, every evening, he walked in the Berkeley Hills. Mm. Um, this almost makes me weep um, because I know that area actually. But, um, and what he said he was doing is he was the, doing a classical N ratio. He was getting himself in ratio. He was embodying mm -hmm. what he had, all the mental stuff he had done all day. So he was pulling his parts together <laughs> by walking in the Berkeley Hills. So, um, how, so tell us about your love of, well, where your name came from, okay. your love of numbers. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah, well, let me show some art while I explain. Yeah, yeah, no, I... Yeah, yeah hold I'm, on a second here. Okay, yeah. Um, and I do want to say something about... I will in a bit. About, I, I have my little picture here. Uh, well. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, Zoom, you can do this. <laughs> I really like the one. Um, there we go. Hold on one okay. second here. Get sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just technology sometimes doesn't do it. Well, that was actually the one I wanted <laughs> to mention that when you start to talk about the quantum, and I mentioned to you, uh -huh. uh, meditation teacher David G, and many, 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 and you can look up all over TED Talks. Everybody says now, we're made of stardust. I believe so it. I love, well, you know, you can get real intellectual and say yeah. the minerals, the uh -huh. particles, the electrons, uh, what the neurons, what, what, not neurons, but um, anyway, we are literally made of stardust. So we come into formation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to explain it much more, but your picture is exquisite to me. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if you zoom in, let's say you have this really amazing microscope and you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in and, you know, you'll get to the point where you can see cells and then you'll get to the point where you can see atoms. And if you keep zooming in and in and in, all of a sudden it's just going to look like stars. Like uh -huh. it's going to look like the universe. Um, uh -huh. Just little particles. Um you know, in the same formation that you see stars. And well, there's so, a there's a thing in nature called mimicry. Yeah, and it runs throughout nature. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, um, these fractal but, forms, mm -hmm. um, and I love that, um, and I use it a lot in my art. This idea that you know the same patterns keep repeating. Um, exactly. So, the branches on a tree are also like, look like the veins in your lungs, also look like um, how rivers are formed. Right, 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 right. No, it's beautiful. Um, and so I this have, piece is really just, you know, walking in your divine light, you know, and the divine mother, I, I find this as like a mother and child. Just going with that sort of spiritual. It seems support. very, very appropriate right now. Yes. <laughs> I won't get into politics. But, uh, I know. Uh, we, yeah. we need the feminine. <laughs> I think the we balance the, there. Yeah, the divine feminine <laughs> is coming back. Is is coming back, and, and women are gonna rock it. Uh, so this is a wonderful piece to do that. Do you wanna? Um, and then I uh, wanted to show a few kind of going back to one of a few of the things that you were saying about being boxed in um let me pull it up real quick here um one second um oh, i had it in here um Sorry. Okay. Um, I know you talked about 
uh, where I got my name. <laughs> and so this is uh, called natural numbers. And um, so I've always walked, it's actually made out of numbers. I can see. <laughs> So I've walked in two worlds my whole life. I have been a math teacher um, and I have been an artist. And, you know, often people say that these two things don't go together. Mm -hmm. But for me, I see math not as just memorizing formulas. I see it as like a mystical experience. I see it as like how the universe works, how nature works. I go out in nature and I can see formulas. Um, I find it this very beautiful language. And so, um, you know, when I was teaching math, I was kind of like boxed into that, um, the way that I had to teach it, which was mm -hmm. memorizing stuff. <laughs> right, right. Right. And I really wanted to go deeper. I really wanted to show this esoteric element. And I found that I could do that with art and storytelling. And so math often shows up in my work, but in a way that like doesn't scare people, um, in a way that you don't need to know like advanced calculus to get it, um, that you can just get it on a, like a intuitive level. Well, I'm a math phobic. I'm a math phobic. Uh -huh. so you got somebody good here. Yeah. But I also I have many friends that are into sacred geometry. Uh -huh. And I, I happen to have had a big part of my life in the music world. I'm not a player, but I was married to one. And um, he and and they all say music numbers run the world, which mm -hmm. in music, music, yeah. Is exactly what they're what it is scales and mm -hmm. notes and harmonies and um so this is a wonderful piece though um thank you um yeah um I don't know what else to profound to say I actually chose to go into qualitative research mm -hmm. rather than quantitative. But actually, in a lot of the methods I was passionate about, you could do both, both and. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I'll tell a real quick story. When people were doing a wine tasting, and this was a, a humor story by P.G. or Rourke, and they were doing a wine tasting. So the drunker they got, the more refined their palates got, <laughs> actually. That's but, awesome. <laughs> but, but to do... Uh, yeah, they could tell the difference between bad wine and good wine. And I've had my share, let me tell you, um, <laughs> um, uh, back in the day. Um, but interesting, to do really a classic wine tasting, you have to score things. So they had to, they had to add numbers yeah. to their quality, their qualitative experience. So it was a lot of fun. It was, awesome. a, it was a great story of both and. Yes. And I'm, big, I'm big on both and Boolean mm -hmm. logic. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready? Yeah. To show I want to pull up something for that both and. Um, okay. So it's this piece called Together We're Whole. The what? Together We Are Whole. Uh huh. And it's about like the different ways that we think, the different perspectives all working together um so if all we have is math nerds <laughs> you know the life is going to be a little dry so we need other forms of thinking and we need other perspectives and um, well you know you know the classic zen beginning book is called <laughs> beginner's mind yeah the, the more empty you come uh -huh. if you think you're in that box <laughs> yeah you're sort of, you know what, um, but um, the more, be but also in one of the uh, methods of group process that I do, you want people of all ranges. Mm -hmm. You want beginners, you want old pros, and you want, you know, you want diff difference is how we know. Mm -hmm. Difference. So contrast, like if 
if everything was one color here, we couldn't see it. Right. So it's contrast and difference. Mm -hmm. And I'll add to get back to some of our spiritual stuff, mm -hmm. um, appreciation and love of that uniqueness mm -hmm. that creates a greater whole yep. is what we're, we're, we're talking about here, I mm -hmm. think. So I, I do want to remember to ask with each one, how was, is this a painting or is this one of your um, paper art? How was this made? So this was made both um, with paper. So I cut out um, shapes of color out of magazines. So like each puzzle piece I cut out. Um, so like one of these reds was probably cut out of a piece of an apple in a magazine. Um, and then I used um, some digital on this particular one. Um, most of them, I just do the paper, but this is an old one where I had done a little bit of digital um, to do you use, the you lines. Use Photoshop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but my newer work, um, let's see if I can pull up, is all paper. So oh, that, 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 that just gets, I, I can't <laughs> believe that. So people, you got to start to get to what pie's up to here. These are all little cut pieces of paper. Look at that dog's eyes mm -hmm. and tell me you're not touched. And how, how the heck you do that? Well, <laughs> I know it's mad and I'll just leave it as magic, but, um, um, you know, and also remember that Pi's art is all earth friendly because she's re recycling stuff, mm -hmm. and yep. um, and this is a custom a custom commission, right? It's mm -hmm. a of somebody's dog, and um, I think this dog had passed, and so it was a, a memorial piece, um, so really meaningful to the family. Oh, um, yeah, and just a sweet dog. <laughs> oh, well, wow. you really captured those eyes. Look at that. They, they look right through you <laughs> or into your heart, right? Right. That's, that's, and I have, a friend, I have a friend, and she has a disabled um, dash hound. Uh -huh. And every morning, and he's still alive, and he's blind, and he may be deaf, I don't know. But she puts a picture of his nose. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to introduce you to Jen. Jen. She's pretty special. Nice. And, yeah. she might, and she might like some of your art. Cool. Yeah, and I, to come back to the earth friendly, um, not only do I use recycled materials, um, I also donate 10% of everything I earn in my art business to planting trees. Um, so I'm really a big fan of helping support the earth heal and recover and flourish. And um, I feel like trees add a lot of benefit to us um, and to the whole uh -huh, world. Uh -huh. so, well, yeah. one of my degrees is I graduated summa cum laude undergrad in botany. Uh -huh. So we actually know that, and this will get back to our whole point of coherence and um, and support, but trees, as much as they're visible, you may know this, have underneath them yeah. mycorrhizae, yeah. and they, they form a community of mutual support. I was, actually, I was actually in a workshop, a, a, a deep ecology workshop, and one of the, there's the mycorrhizae. Uh -huh. um, one of the groups called themselves the Microrhizia, and I thought, <laughs> oh, I want to be in that group. <laughs> so it's mutual it. sustainability. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like we thrive together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and trees, it's almost like an underground internet. So all the trees are mm -hmm. connected to each other, and then they send each other water and resources. Um, the big trees take care of the baby ones. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a whole community underground. It's cool. Yeah, I have several friends that are really uh, into some of this stuff, and um, but I think I think the world of mycorrhizae—you can actually inoculate the soil with things that'll help 
help the mycorrhizae, but I, I don't have a garden now, so uh-huh. I don't. <laughs> but I'm glad you know what they are. Yeah. So and this I, one, I love yes. planting trees as a cause because it's like you plant a tree, but then it can it can self sustain. Like it'll support all the other trees and, and animals right. and and it can reproduce. So it's not like um right. something where you're having to donate over and over again to something. It's um self sustaining. All right, and I'm not gonna get into it because it's it's too complex, but we do know there is carbon capture. Oh yes. That pollution gets captured by trees and is taken down into the soil. I actually almost thought of doing a graduate degree in how we could use ornamental plants to detoxify. Uh-huh. That we would um, use maybe um, sewage water to water them, and they would spread it spread it out in the environment. I went much more artsy. Uh-huh. artsy well, I went philosophical. I, I went to a school of East West philosophy. So, but um, but all these things tie together. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, thank you for helping with the earth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's my source. It's my muse. I'll get into nature and I will often get my ideas there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's nice to get back to it. Well, I think everyone does. I mean, mm-hmm. another work, one of those same workshops, I met some Japanese kids and you know, tree, tree bathing and earthing, the Japanese sort of started all that stuff. All of a sudden, I'm um, standing and looking at a tree full of vultures. So they had obviously caught Oh, some. my gosh. <laughs> and, um, and it was quite intriguing. And, and all of a sudden, these couple of naked Japanese kids, teens, came racing down the trail, all smudged with whatever was around, you know, and they were doing their thing. It was interesting. It was absolutely. Wow. Amazing. So I don't know what we would call that. I would call it coming, going back to the earth, you know, becoming yeah. back to the earth. Yeah. But there they were on the trail. Um, I think they were naked, but uh, <laughs> this is in Northern California and, um, and it was okay. And um <laughs> But I so was uh, enchanted with them, and they and they're you. Well, you know, like what happens is kids. We call it uh, from eight to twelve. We call the golden age, and then we start to get in our boxes mm-hmm. if if we buy into that, which I think is going to change. I think is going to change, and we're helping change. Uh-huh. I hope that's my intent with reflexivity, mm-hmm. and help people see. No, you do not have to be in one box. Mm-hmm. And heaven knows, I went to, I've got two doctorates and I've been to five colleges. So I've cloned plants. I love it. <laughs> and I've talked to quantum physicists. I've talked to spiritual <laughs> masters. So, I mean, they don't get much more diverse than I am. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> except for my own body and being but uh, I definitely shopped around <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love education. I just think we're here to learn together, to yeah. learn together and to, and I also think in my own case, I'm here to spread joy. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. Really, because I had a rough childhood and I won't even go into that, but I, I had to learn it's okay to laugh and have fun. And, yeah. uh, and actually, when I go walking, if I come to a grove of trees like this, I can almost hear it here. A grove of trees to me becomes like a choir. Ooh, I, yes, I've, I've experienced that before. Uh-huh. Yeah, I used yeah. to have a favorite place in California, and I'd go through an eucalyptus grove. So uh-huh. not only was I getting the aroma as I walked on the the detris, I w- I felt like I was with this choir that was singing. Yeah, I got goosebumps with that. <laughs> my, my own story. My own story. Okay, what's next? Um, let's see here. 
Um, I'm gonna come to this one. The idea that life supports life. Ah. Oh. Now, how can I, can I be pragmatic or practical uh -huh. and ask how you made this one? So this is, um, it is paper. Um, and then I put uh, some paint on top of it. Um, but all of the, everything's paper first. And then, so. mm, that's so poignant. Mm. And, and, you know, since the pandemic, mm -hmm. we're so lacking in this, eh? Mm -hmm. This is gotten graph isolated, and I feel like you know we're isolated as people, but we're isolated in the ways that we think. So those sort of boxing in labels. So we're supposed to think on this person's supposed to think this way. This person's supposed to be this way. But my whole thing is like, how do we get the different ways that we think and see working together? Well, I have pretty connected. Right. I have pretty strong feelings about that. But that because I'm a really devoted spiritual and it's mm -hmm. called practice for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I practice loving kindness. Mm -hmm. So um in in uh, I mean, I'm highly intuitive and sensitive, so I have to keep my boundaries. But um Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear you. I see. Yeah, I hear you, <laughs> <Yeah>. girlfriend. <laughs> um, um, so the loving kindness and yeah, yeah, acceptance of all pieces. Uh, right, and and well, in in the my favorite teacher these days, we talk about civility, dignity, and respect. Mm. So, and and we call Beautiful. ourselves Team Healthy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's actually developmental psychology. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, so we have guidelines that are based on a lot of these principles, but it is not about as you, you know, look at how this is, a, this is a box uh -huh. um, and it has limitations. Uh -huh. So we do need our boundaries, like you and I being sensitives, uh -huh. you know, there's certain people I just won't let into my life. We have to say, no, yeah. you're, you're not the right yeah. energy. We might say color or I mean, not color. I don't want color because one of the reasons I'm in New Mexico, uh, Pia and P Pi and I live 40 miles apart. So in New Mexico, which is huge actually, but I came here cause it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I came back here, came back here. I, I, mm -hmm. I did some of my other training here, but, um, you know, I, I actually read an interesting article the other day on freedom and liberty and all these things take agreements mm -hmm. and, um, and we all have to take care of ourselves while, um, being committed to um, the greater good, mm -hmm. and that's basic for me. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. This is beautiful pie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's all about it's it's all about accepting all of it, you know. And there's two sides here, and you know the positive side, and then there's the other side that's not necessarily dark, but just you know. More well, shattered. you know, I always, I always think of, I mean, and Leonard Cohen was not original, but I always think of the cracks are where the light mm -hmm. gets in. Yeah. yeah. And also I've made Raku pottery. If you know what, uh -huh. I, I that, it, where you throw it into a dirt, you're, we camped out and we made pots and then we threw them into the fire. But the Japanese, um, they repair their, and there's a name for it. I can't remember it, but, uh, yep they uh, mend their broken pots with gold. Mm -hmm. And the other one I like that people don't think about, if you go into a Japanese garden, there should be a stone missing from the path. Really? I didn't yes. know that. Yes, that's technical in a, 
in a Japanese garden, you often, often find the pathway. And that's because nothing is perfect. Mm. And I'll tell you, when I get mixed up with some, especially with, I have some re really um, important artistic friends and they can be really narrow-minded if I can. Really, I'm really in love with humanity. I mean, where I live in a senior community and we have people with really difficult handicaps, I find great beauty in that. Look at all these colors and shapes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I, I'm in love with humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I you mean, know, and, and the planet, and the planet, the mother, yeah. that, the mother that made us. Yeah. And uh, here, I want to pull something up. Um, that is just incredible. Oh. So that dropping of perfection. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So this is this. Uh, it's like riding the wheel, you know, it's like, I think of um, perfection as the box, you know, it's like, it's stagnant. It doesn't move. It's like you make something so perfect and it's complete, but there's no movement. It's still, whereas like a wheel you know, there's chaos and it allows movement, it allows flow. Um, it's not perfect. But in that imperfection, it can really move. It, it has freedom. And so she's riding this thing, you know, and there's in all the kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> oh, that, that's incredibly, I mean, I just love how you um, represent your worldviews, your philosophy in your art. I mean, how, and maybe somebody think it's pretty obvious, but I find it quite uh, profound. That's, uh, yeah, she's um, balancing. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you know, epigenetics, uh, environmental well-being, it's all about balance. Yeah. It's about balance. How do we balance ourselves? How much going out? how much yep. uh, eating chocolate, how much anything. It's all about balance. Mm -hmm. um, that balance is a dance. It's not a, you know, it's not a static thing. Like if you ever see somebody trying like at the gym and they're on one of those balance thingies and they're, trying, you know, you're watching them and they're trying to balance, you know, they're all over the place. They're like, their arms are moving in so many different directions trying to rebalance. Are you talking about the Pilates balls? Yeah. God, I, I love to have, I used to have a desk chair, it was a Pilates ball, and I loved it. Yep. And, your, and your butt, your butt is constantly rocking and yep. rolling, and, and um, like she's doing here. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of what the earth does, you know, it's like, okay, we've got one species taken off over here, and then we got to rebalance it over here, and you know, there's always this. Flux. Well, life is dynamic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, words are not the experience. This give art, visual mm -hmm. arts, or any kind of art, a poetry I love too, even, even though that's words, the, the felt experience is much more profound for me. Mm -hmm. I think from, for, Anybody that's a bit awake, I <laughs> hesitate to use that word, but um, um, but this is lovely. Thank you. Yeah, and there's a piece that goes before this. It's sort of a series, and it's um, let me pull it up. It's kind of the opposite, where we're boxing in nature. And pushing mm -hmm. and pushing. Mm -hmm. I, I I think a lot of us after the pandemic, we said not pushing anymore. Yeah. Not pushing 
And you've probably heard of the quiet quitting. I know. It's a response to all of that. It's like, yeah, the quiet quitting yeah. movement. And um, I recently, you know, I was overwhelmed because I had like so much going on in my business all of a sudden. It's all good, but I was overwhelmed. So I looked at YouTube for advice and I found this guy and he was like, okay, you're going to get it together and you're going to work 16 hour days and you're going <laughs> to get it done. <laughs> I know no, I, no, I, that's I, not gonna work <laughs> now that's one of the gifts of becoming an elder because you can just say uh-uh, uh-uh. Hey, I'm a, I mean I struggle financially but I say no I yeah. say no as much as I possibly can and <laughs> you couldn't pay me to do that and I feel for the, all the people that are working two, two and yeah. three jobs I mean yeah. and that. I mean, that gets into a lot of different, uh, uh, I basically consider myself a cultural researcher. I'm fascinated how we, we try to live. And, and I bet you agree with me, but this is what's destroying the planet. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's out of alignment. I mean, nature, you know, stuff works. I mean, those bees, like I look at them, they work hard, you know, that like, animals and plants work but they don't work to the point of pure exhaustion there's the mm-hmm. balance there's rest too right 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 well and also i'm thinking of pollution mm-hmm. that we have caused and uh, by our lifestyles yep. consumption constant consumption of things mm-hmm. um you know, why not support an artist <laughs> and the <laughs> earth and who plants trees <laughs> rather than go buy a new blouse, you yeah. know, um, from China. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. What are, and that's what reflexivity is also about is what are our values? Mm-hmm. Uh, and what are you, and we each have our own mm-hmm. and how do we um, how do we learn from each other like I can tell your values right here right now mm-hmm. and I can say oh wow I can really resonate with that and mm-hmm. uh, and I resonate with this woman sitting on I the know. <laughs> I feel like I've I been know who her. that is <laughs> I know who that is but I uh, um, Huh? <laughs> um, That's been me my whole life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we go beyond. Uh, yeah. oh, so we explore our values, our values, and and what we appreciate, and um, and what we can appreciate about each other, and. Um, and we and for me the joy of living uh, and this and i and look how much i can learn from this picture Mm. well thank you Mm -hmm. yeah see if there's other things i want to share here um So this um, is called oh currency of life, and so uh, um, currency, currency. Oh, yeah. oh man! So you can see if you look closely. Oh, I you see. Can There's see money, it, right? Yeah. The whole thing is made out of money. Wow! And so wow. this is this exploration of money and nature that I have been doing for a long time. And um, I was a financial literacy teacher for a while, in addition to being a math teacher. Um, I need that. I need to be out there. (laughs) And I was teaching all this stuff, but, you know, and then I was working individually with people, too, and it was like, with the there's, there's the, like, technical stuff of money, but there's this whole emotional, like, 
psychological trauma around money and everybody's got something with it. And it's this heaviness. And, you know, when I became a full-time artist, I was like overwhelmed by that pain. And Mm -hmm. I was like looking for a way to heal. So I went up the mountain and I went out in nature and I was just, I asked nature, like, help me see, (laughs) basically just a meditation, help me see. And what came was that money is the thing that disconnects people from nature. Um, It's true. I agree. I've studied alternative currencies for Mm -hmm. years now. And um, um, I read, I read a bit of uh, sacred economics by Mm -hmm. Charles Eisenstein, and that really helped me Mm -hmm. um, understand it's not about me. It's about these systems Mm -hmm. and hierarchies. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I was in college, there was a book called Laying Down the Ladder, you know, where we were Mm -hmm. all on equal. And I know my friend Ruth Glendenick, maybe I'll have her on sometime, but um, she's all about how can communities mutually support each other Mm -hmm. so that, and I know you have a lot of that in Santa Fe, um, Mm -hmm. um, but money separates. Yeah. And it it really does. And what came up was like, okay, currency itself is okay. But what's happening is that money only works with people. So I can't pay, like, if I gave money to a bunny, like the bunny could not do anything with that. Trees can't do anything with money. Like, so our whole like reciprocity system uh-huh. of trade is only with one. people. I love reciprocity. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So people, so like I have, if I want some, but something from somebody, there's an obligation I should probably pay them or give them trade or something. And it's, it's assumed, but we don't have that with nature. If I cut down a tree, I don't, there's really no financial system for me to have to repay nature for that. So there's no reciprocity system with nature. And that's when I started planting trees, because it was like, oh, like if I take something from nature, I'm going to need to give back to nature just the same as I would do with people. Yeah, I mean, and again, that touches on how unconscious of that reciprocity we are as we watch the Amazon go down, which Mm -hmm. are called the lungs of the earth. Mm -hmm between the dia, the, the dia atoms, diatoms in the ocean and the Amazon, that's where our oxygen comes from. Yes. And, and, and what did we just hear recently? That one of the, the last of one of these unique tribes died. And, um, and they're just, they're cutting down trees like there's, like there's no connection. Mm-hmm. Yep. It really makes me wanna weep. And so this piece is about, well, how do we, how do we reconnect something, you know, like, how do we shift the way we think about trade reciprocity and include nature as part of that? And as soon as I started giving back to nature, my finances got way better. I mean, way better. And the pain left. And it was just like, oh, that's where all that pain comes from. I have have a YouTube friend who uh, she gives 10% and she doesn't make much money, but Uh she gives 10% to um, Food for America. Uh It's a a feeding um, for poor people. Well, a feeding. Uh uh, uh, But she and because I work with uh, natural health and I take vitamins and stuff, there's only one company I know that ties, T-I-T-H-E-S, and they they give something like 10% to like about four different organizations. Nice. And these, these guys are now all multi, multi-million, they've made natural health a multi-million dollar industry. And we've got kids that need so much and they're not 
giving back Mm -hmm. and it breaks my heart I've, i've actually tried to organize some things like how about we go to flint and help detox some of these kids from heavy metals and um you're right uh i think that's a really good i love the word reciprocity and uh i mean of course there's a lot of times where love is enough. That's the reciprocity to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, appreciation. Some, there, there are therapists that believe that what really heals is just being together. I could see that. That's, yeah. that's really what's healing is giving someone att- attention. And if you look up some memes on attention, on the power of attention, yep. um, what we pay attention to is what we get. So you obviously, you're a beautiful example of somebody who um, has come to a place of um, a peace with this. Hmm. I, I, we, we need to talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I feel like I generally, I give and give and give and give. Yeah. And, um, and then you I don't can't get it back. You, I, I can't tell you the number of guys that troll me uh-huh. and, and I either tell them, look, I'm 72 or I say, look, I'm, I'm a counselor and I charge $150 an hour. If you want to be an online friend, let's make a deal. They don't do it. Mm-hmm. That's a smart move. It's a way to set some value. Well, it's, it's true. I mean, if you're going <laughs> to, yeah. if you want, if you want to meet me and get to know me, um, it feels but I actually have a, a Vedic astro, astro, astrologer friend, and he says we all, and he uses Carolyn Miss. Uh-huh. He's a, she began as a medical intuitive, but he uses her tarot deck. And um, one of her ones is the sacred prostitute. And there are books on the sacred prostitute. And that we all are somehow prostituting ourselves I, I don't quite have my philosophy altogether on that. I, <laughs> I come and I go, and, and so as circumstances change, and um, and right now, um, I, I give a lot, but I don't. I haven't. Be, I haven't made the flip of receiving. Yeah. Yeah. It's both. <laughs> Very much yeah. both. Yeah. It's, well, uh, it's the currency. It's the trade of both. Well, it's that's real interesting because philosophers for a long time have asked, where did we go wrong and start exploiting the earth so badly and um, and getting away from our 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 roots, our our innate just beingness, and uh, our becoming. Um, And I have concluded from my study of alternative that it began with trade. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would feel about that, but that's a whole other discussion, I think. (laughs) (laughs) So what else do you want to show? Because I have I have one of your ones that I wanted to um, definitely tell people about. So which one is it? Let's see if I can pull it up. Well, it's it's Orion. Okay. Yeah, I got that in here. Do you have Orion on there? Hold on one second. Um. So, oh, I love this. So this mm-hmm. is you want you want to tell the story of the paint of the piece? Yeah. So this is a commission um, that I did. Um, I love. I do commissions, and I definitely do a lot of dogs and pets, but I also do stuff with children, and um, I really enjoy children because um, I get to work with the story element. And so this was a, at the time he was two and um, his middle name was Orion. And so he's, he's finding himself as finding oh. Orion. Um, mm. so the, this is sweet the, energy. The point I want to make about this to all our listeners or viewers uh, and viewers is that um if you know anything about web business, we all need, we all are looking for customers, yeah. and um, and we're all looking for what we call lead magnets. 
Mm -hmm. And most of it, I will say, if I can be blunt, is garbage. <laughs> but if you go and sign up for Pi's newsletter, you will get, and I have my little picture right here. Can you uh -huh. hold the, it up a little bit so then they can see it? Where I, I, I don't know what's showing on the other side. Yeah, so, but um, so she will mail you this. And, and you so can I, choose from several different options. So this is one of them. And so I'll mail you a free little mini print. And Yeah, um, for giving her your um, your your address and email. Uh, email. Um, and then what I send out with the email is like basically pictures of new artwork and stories with the artwork. Um, so I'm not super aggressive salesperson at all. Um, yeah, I just no, try I, to add value and yeah, you know, entertain. Um, yeah, well, I, I just, I find a lot of integrity in your work. Well, thank you. And um, getting that little piece was just a delight. And <laughs> I've sort of got it in a special place now. Aww, nice because it says so much to me about him recognizing himself mm -hmm. as the archer in the sky mm -hmm. and he's made he knows he's made a star kids you know when i wrote a children's book and and i in 217 and i said we're all made of stardust kids got it yeah they get it <laughs> and, and the parents all said oh this is too seminal that was where they, <laughs> this is too this is too advanced well then all of a sudden ted talk started coming out and it's you know if you do any studying of it it's it's a pretty accepted concept that we well that we came from exploded stars you know <laughs> and and floated down and i i can i find it really lovely and, and I, I I believe for mental health, because I do a lot of uh, trauma therapy with people or help people with trauma and stuff, it helps us recognize we are connected. Yeah. And that feeling of disconnection. Yep. Um, We're all part of the same. Right, right. Um, I just found a quote the other day. I don't know. Do you know who Father Richard Rohr is? Mm -mm. He's actually here in Albuquerque and he's very famous and he's um, he's one of the most holistic um, nature loving friars priest you'll ever meet. Nice. And uh, it's R O H R. But he has a quote and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to just paraphrase this. But he says, if you do not mythologize your life, you will pathologize it. Whoa. That's powerful. So if you don't look at your, it gives me chills. Whoa. If, you don't, if you don't consider what is my story? What have I faced and, and overcome? What is my... Um, what am I doing now? Uh, how am I creating my story? People literally get sick. Literally get sick. Fascinating, because they have no meaning. That yeah, that's exactly right. That's and I I I did want to throw that in. Some if anything, my graduate studies were about how we make meaning. Yeah, and um, even when things are senseless. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that actually, um, so one of the things that I've done with my art is to create a deck. So it's like, like, a, like a tarot deck. It's like a tarot deck, but it's actually just my art. So it's just the art that I've been showing. And so it doesn't follow the tarot. It's just images like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it comes with questions of like, what do you see in the image? And mm -hmm. what do you feel? And how does this image relate to your life? And what does this image want to tell you? And it, it's a tool to get you to start to look at That's your life right. symbolically. Uh -huh. um, 
and I do free readings online um, if anybody wants to try it out. Um, but yeah, I think art can be a tool to bring us there. Well, anything that causes us to reflect yep. and, and find our interpretations. Mm -hmm. I, I have um, about five different decks and I pull one card. So, oh, let's see if... Um, so you say you are seeing me. I'm not seeing me on the screen. Okay, I so, see you. Yeah. So today I got the she wolf. Nice. Here, I'm and, gonna stop sharing my screen so we can see better. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I thought this was a really good one for us today. This is women celebrating. Nice. I like that one. So um, anyway, I do this every morning. As, and and I do my meditations, um, and you know you know the story. Um, Freud makes me crazy because <laughs> I th I think Freud pathologized us. He said we were sick. Well, his friend Jung went and created these archetypes, and he did astrology with his clients. Freud went bonkers when he found out that Jung was doing this. So I love archetypes. I love, I love Carl Jung. I, yeah, I studied him when I was in school. He's amazing. He was the sexist pig, but that's okay. <laughs> well, it's back in the day, whatever. <laughs> but his, his philosophy was. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that he, he uh, his whole thing was if we don't look inside and then bring it out, Mm -hmm. We're going to be patholo. We're going to be sick. Mm -hmm. And um, interesting. I also I have a favorite. Um, I have a favorite um, a humanistic human, humanistic psychologist, Car Clark Moustakis, and he basically wrote a book on his experience of learning to become a psychotherapist. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So he was self-reflecting all the time as he was working with, and that's what reflexivity, oh, mm -hmm. reflexivity is all about reflecting within mm -hmm. and reflecting on the bigger picture. Yeah. Oh my. Well, you said something about like finding what's within and then bringing it forth. Oh, sweetheart. That's beautiful. And so that's what this piece is about. And you mentioned that we're all made of stardust. Well, stars have to shine out uh, or they implode <laughs> or something. I don't know. They, right, they don't right. do well. <laughs> the, 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 um, we're supposed to use our gifts. We're supposed to shine. I, th I have a feeling that if since I'm also a minister, I have to say, I think that's part of what we're here for yes. is to let the divine be seen yeah. in us and, um, and uh, share it with other people and with the, with the earth and, um, and stars. Um, people who do not reflect really break my heart really break my heart um mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people <laughs> in current politics <laughs> that that have a really narrow uh, view of values values and bigger pictures um Mm -hmm. I don't want to go for, too far into that, but yeah, um, we could go down a rabbit hole. There. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Thank you, thank you. Ra <laughs> no, no rabbit intellectual <laughs> rabbit holes here. When we've got this beautiful piece that says it all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a book called "The Time It Takes Falling Bodies to Light." Interesting. It's an old classic. It's it's really not an easy read, but um, it's about the mythology of mm -hmm. coming to Earth and hmm. and awake and and lighting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. As in, as in light. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. That's beautiful. Thank you. Did I, I did show my little card right? Yeah. Here. 
Yep. Unless... Well, that was the big thing. I'm on. How are we doing on times? I think we're I, probably I, coming up to it. Um, I um um. My big thing was that I wanted to tell people, well, number one, so in the next week or so, I'll be, I'm putting this into my newsletter mm -hmm. and I, I really ask people to subscribe and, um, and enjoy because uh, this is an experiment to do this collaboratively with Pi and, uh, and, and that she and I have so much resonance and, um, so reflexivity will be coming out and I highly recommend you go to Pi Luna Art and sign up and get your little picture. Yeah. Get you a little picture and help plant a tree. And and if I have a lot of leads I could give you, girlfriend. We need to talk <laughs> later. I mean, um I, I have I'm trying to remember there's another Santa Fe artist. She likes, she likes to walk barefoot in the woods and Ooh, I love actually that. spent time in South America and um, live naked in the Amazon. Oh, are you talking about Robin Easton? Yes. I love yes. her. Thank She's you. a dear friend Thank of mine. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now you make me realize maybe Robin will come on if mm -hmm. we, if we, um, if we, if we uh, make a good example, maybe yeah. Robin will come on because uh, she's an extraordinary, she's amazing, an extraordinary writer. And if you just see one picture of her feet walking across <laughs> the rocks, <laughs> she's an ama amazing uh, woman. So I have. A, do you know her? Have you met her? Oh, she's a very dear friend of mine. She's. I love uh, her. Yeah, very close friend. Um, so. Well, then maybe you can help hook me up. <laughs> I mean, she is a friend. I've been showing her stuff on my um, uh, mm -hmm. on my Facebook for years now. And she was like when she found out about my little sharing upliftment group, she was blown away. And um, and I do post her posts once in a while, but uh, I hadn't thought of her for mm -hmm. uh, being a uh, I mean, geez, we do live near Santa Fe, you know, and, when, and someday I'll tell you there's a whole, I, I grew up in Monterey Bay, on Monterey Bay in California, and there is a Monterey Bay Santa Fe connection. Interesting. Because Monterey is where uh, Pebble Beach is, which is a golf, uh -huh. uh, golf in the kingdom was, Esalen is there, Big Sur is there, um, and at one point, there was a golf pro, and I've, I've got a little bit of literature on her, but they moved to Santa Fe and were very um, uh, pioneering on, um, what's your big street? Canyon, Canyon Road, <laughs> where all the galleries are. Well, they had a family... Um, I want to call it an encampment, but it was a family village down beneath there. And, uh, and the wife's name was Beatrice. I've got some stuff. On. She was deaf. She was an English gardener. And she grew, I got to go visit her. And she oh, cool. had beautiful flowers. And my ex-father-in-law and his wife, they planted trees all over Santa Fe. Nice. I love so, it. Yeah, I mean, we, we. I bet I've got other people we can share. Yeah. Um, nice. You know, a lot of them now have passed, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's just been a joy, Pi. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. Um, well, I hope I can put some. And... Uh, yeah, I hope. And um, now we will both have a recording that we mm -hmm. could. I can use it in the newsletter, and if. I don't even know how to upload to my YouTube channel yet, but um, uh, maybe that'll happen. Yep. But I do hope, how can we um, close here in a way? Yeah, so um, so to check out more of your interviews, I, I know that you're going to probably interview more artists and more authors and thinkers, and um, I highly suggest that you sign up for her newsletter. Um, and let's 
let's see. Yeah, and then if you want um, to be a part of my newsletter um, and get a little free mini print, you can go to pylunaart.com. Right, and I, and I do want to put it out to anybody that's listening. If you have a gift that you'd like to share, uh-huh. or even I, I'm, I actually have a friend from back home who has a book out, and uh-huh. I don't know if she'll want to, but it was about her traumatic childhood. Well, I'm really interested in how women deal with trauma in their yeah. lives, and I hope she comes, uh, she will come on, uh-huh. and um, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited. You know, I I have a piece on medium and on reflexivity. It's called um, it's called something about how about some coherence, <laughs> and yeah, and right. so. This is all about helping ourselves to know ourselves in the greater world Mm -hmm. and create things together. So thank you, Pi. Yeah, well, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.